Here's how you can easily create these title animations using a 3D camera inside of After Effects. Let's jump on in. Later in the video, I'm gonna be showing you a free script you can use to make animating cameras super easy. But first, let's start with the basics. How do you set up your own camera from scratch? Here inside of After Effects, I have an empty composition, which is After Effects word for the timeline. To start, let's create a new camera. Go down and right click here on this empty space and select new camera. Now here, a small window will pop up with a bunch of camera options. Don't worry too much about them. Just focus on the presets. Here we can pick the focal length of our virtual lens. If you don't know what to pick, remember that the smaller the number is, the wider the angle will be. And just a side note, I film my videos with a wide angle lens, 35 millimeters, so that way you can see more of the room. If I used a higher number, then you would see mainly my face and not a lot of my set. So from here, we can pick OK. And if you ever wanna go back and change it, just double click on the camera layer here and we'll get the same pop-up again. So fly. Now the camera is useless right now because we have nothing in our 3D space. So we can press Control T or Command T to enable the type tool. And let's write out something in our composition window. Down in the timeline, let's take this box to turn our text into a 3D layer. When working in a 3D environment, it's always better to see multiple angles at the same time. In After Effects, we can go down here and change from one view to two views or more. The right panel here will show what my camera sees. But on the left, I want to change it to custom view. With this setup, I can hold Alt or Option on a Mac and use my mouse to move around the 3D space on my left panel without messing up my actual camera view on the right panel. If I select the camera, we can use this gizmo to move and rotate our camera around. In the timeline, we can press P to get quick access to the position parameters and R for rotation. And here's where we can add keyframes and then animate the camera. Now that we have the basics out of the way, let's make something quick and cool. My idea is to make a cube with text on all four sides of it, so that way we can have the camera spin around it. So let's select the text layer and press Control or Command plus D to duplicate it. And with the text layer selected, you can see that the anchor point is at the bottom which is what we want. So I can hold control or command as I move the text up and it will snap to the top of the first text layer. Then on my second text layer, we can rotate the X axis 90 degrees. If you wanna move your anchor point, just hold Y as you move this gizmo and only the anchor point will be moved. So let's duplicate this text layer and snap it to the top of the previous text and rotate it. Let's do it again to complete our cube. Now, right now we can see the other text layer behind, so it looks kind of messy. So let's fix that. Let's cover it up by creating a new solid layer. Let's make it black to match our background color. And we'll make this layer 3D also. Now is a good time to change our left panel view to the right or left view instead so we can see our cube from the side. I'll also change the color of my solid layer to something else so it's easier to see which layer is which in our side view. Let's resize our solid layer until it covers up our text and in the side view, we'll move it slightly behind the text. Then we can duplicate our solid and pretty much do what we did before and create an inner cube of black solids. To rotate the camera around the text, let's right click on the timeline and create a new null layer. Let's make it 3D and move it to the center of our cube. We will use this layer as a target for the camera. To do that, let's go back down to the timeline and parent the camera layer to the null layer. Now, when I rotate the null layer, the camera will stay pointed at our text as it spins around, which is super cool. So down in the timeline, we can keyframe the X rotation of our null to create one full spin. Now the animation is kind of stiff, so let's add some curves. Press this button to open up the graph editor and with the rotation parameter selected, we'll see the ugly linear curve we currently have, which nobody likes the linear curve. Let's select both of our keyframes and press the easy ease button to give it some curves. We can also open up these handles to mess with the curves even more. And let's see what we've got. The good thing about using the null layer to make it spin is that we can still animate the camera separately. So what I'll do here is animate the camera's position 
and have it slowly move back as it spins. Now, my idea for this is to have another text layer farther away from our cube. So as the camera spins and moves backwards, it will reveal the final text at the end. So this is what we have so far. It looks good, but I don't like the fact that we see our final text far away in the back as we're spinning. I only want it to show up at the end. So to fix that, let's go down to the text layer, press T to open up opacity. And I remember that because T also stands for transparency, which is another word for opacity. So here I can keyframe the opacity to go from zero to 100 right towards the end. Let's also keyframe the opacity of the text in the cube. I want to lower the opacity of the cube as we reveal the final text. After I messed around with the animation a little bit more, I added some final touches. I created a new adjustment layer on top of everything and added glow and noise using Motion Ray's super glow effect, which comes with some pretty neat presets. And here's the result. The next title effect is the scribble animation, but creating it from scratch is gonna be pretty complicated. Luckily, this is a video template from our sponsor, Motion Array. Once we download it, we get the project file along with the font downloads and a tutorial to guide you through how to edit the project. But I always say the best way to learn is to do, so let's open it on up. The first thing to look at here are these opened compositions. The text placeholder comp is where you can edit the text. The color comp has a layer that contains the color controls. And the control comp here has all the other controls, like changing the look of the text and these camera options. You can see that we have three presets and an option to add a camera shake as well. So after you make all your edits and you're happy with the result, you can go to the render comp here and render out the results. I went through motion array templates and I added all my favorite templates that have camera controls into a collection, which you can find linked down below. But it's important to remember that there are way more video templates and assets available with a motion array subscription. They've got stock footage photos, LUTs, music, and even AI voiceover. But my favorite part about Motion Array has to be their Premiere Pro and After Effects plugin. Remember the super glow effect from earlier? How about adding fire effects to your text in one click? There's that too. The truth is, is that you get so many easy to use effects with a Motion Array subscription. You can use my link below to get two extra months free when you sign up for an annual plan. Thanks to Motion Array for sponsoring and now on to the next camera title effect. For our last title animation, I already have 3D text prepared inside the timeline. But instead of creating a camera like we just did, I'm going to use this free script called Camera Crew that I've linked to down below. Once downloaded, let's put it in the After Effects script folder. Here's the default location of the script folder for both Mac OS and Windows. So once it's inside there, we can go back to After Effects and go up to File, Script and click on camera crew to run it. Now this After Effects script will create multiple layers, but you don't have to worry about them. Just press the shy button here and it will hide all the layers except the settings layer. And I just love this little button, the shy. It's like, I'm so shy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide in the comp. So let's select the layer and go up to effect controls. And here we'll have a bunch of options to help control the camera. Let's just go down the list, shall we? The target layer is the most powerful one, but we'll look at that later. Camera position and camera rotation have all the basic camera controls you'd expect. And what's interesting is auto movement. I can bump up one of these parameters and if I hit play, the camera will constantly move in that direction. So if I want the camera to constantly move or rotate, you can do it here without having to mess with any keyframes. The lens option here is where you can change the focal length. And focus control here, this is how you can achieve the depth blur. We'll try this out in a bit. And finally, camera shake, which gives you that natural handheld camera movement. There's a bunch of presets to choose from here, but you can also adjust each individual parameter to get your perfect shake. So now let's go back up to the target layer. To utilize this, I took some time off camera to add a few more text layers and also my logo to the scene. And I spread them out in 3D space. What we can do here is set each target layer to each of my text layers, ending 
with the logo. With this setup, we can adjust the target transition parameter, and then our 3D camera will automatically move to each layer. Let's take auto rotate and the camera will also rotate following each target layer. That means that we can keyframe this parameter to go from one target to the next, and we'll instantly get this animation that would usually take a lot of time to do manually. If you think the target is too close or too far from the camera or maybe not centered, what we can do is go to the text layer itself and move the anchor point of that layer by holding Y. Since the camera is actually targeting the anchor point of each layer, moving it will change where the camera is pointing at. Now we can go back to the camera settings layer. Let's select the target transition parameter and use the graph editor to make the animation more smooth. And this is what we got. We can also tick on autofocus and go down to the focus control tab and change the aperture and blur amount to get some nice depth blur for the text that is farther back in 3D space. And for those of you that are new to cameras and lenses, aperture is how much light is being let into the camera. So the lower the number of the aperture, the bigger the aperture is and more light is being let in. Like my camera here, I'm at a 1.8 aperture and that's why my background is a little bit more blurry. The next thing I want to do is make the camera slowly push backwards throughout the whole animation. But when I use auto movement, it messes up the target transitions. As you can see, the animation stutters a bit every time the camera switches targets. So instead, I just went into the position tab and added keyframes to the Z position to manually animate my camera to move backwards even after the transition ends. To fill up the empty spaces, I added some 3D particles using the CC particle world, which is a built-in effect inside of After Effects. Now, I won't go into depth on how to use the CC particle world effect. It could be its own video, but if you want a full video on it, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. But for this video, if you want the same results, you can pause the video right now here on YouTube and you can copy these parameters on screen right now. These are really cool because once you turn on the motion blur on all these layers, these particles will react to the fast camera movements pretty nicely. And finally, I'll finish up with the super glow effect once again. If you want to get your hands on the project files from this tutorial, be sure to join my Patreon community called The Editing Room. And if you want to learn some more cool title animation inside of After Effects, just click right over here. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.